Okay, welcome back folks. Today we're going to discuss Lesson 6, Controlling Access to Local Hardware and Applications. And today's lecture does cover Exam Objective 2.3. We're going to be looking at managing installation of and access to removable devices. We're going to be talking about application restrictions and how to configure them using something called Software Restriction Policies and App Locker, the new improved App Locker. And last but not least, talk a little bit about configuring assigned access, or some people like to call kiosk mode. So let's go ahead and get started with Lesson 6. First, we're going to talk about configuring hardware restrictions. And we're going to talk about hardware restrictions for a number of reasons. First and foremost, I guess historically speaking, we've always associated removable hardware as kind of a security risk, right? I mean, uh, there for a while we blamed uh, things like USB devices and DVDs for uh, allowing malware into our controlled environments. Um, matter of fact, in the last uh, lecture in Lesson 5, we talked about some ways that we could use autoplay or disable autoplay uh, for our removable me media to help reduce some of those security risks. But there are times when we look at removal media as more of a security risk than just introducing malware. For instance, in recent years we have seen a significant increase in the storage capabilities of removable media, prompting a lot of network administrators to be concerned about what kind of data is actually leaving the corporate environment. Are we losing our records, our financial uh, data? Are we losing trade secrets? Are we losing healthcare records or employee records or things of that nature? Uh, particularly if an employee gets disgruntled or whatever. And uh, so as network administrators, at some point we wrestle with the concept of whether or not we're going to restrict media, removal media, other devices connecting to our workstations. In order for us to do that, uh, we have, to have a number of ways that we can implement these restrictions, one of which is in a domain setting, we can use in concert with our server 2012 uh, domain controllers uh, group policy uh, simply by going into the computer configuration policies administrative template system device installation device installation restrictions folder in our domain controller and enable some policies to help restrict how our network workstations can install drivers uh, for hardware devices. That screen looks something like this and as you can see we have several different types of options that are available to us for uh, how we are going to install these device drivers. For instance, I can prevent the installation of removable devices altogether. Uh, I can allow administrators to override device installation restriction policies. Say for instance, I know that I have network administrators on my network that are using their USB drives as diagnostic utility toolkits or they're using uh, bootable media on these USB drives. They need to have a way to continue working unrestricted and by uh, allowing my administrators to override these device restriction policies that's one way that they would be allowed to do that. So, as you can see there are a whole host of ways that we can do that. We can uh, say allow installations or prevent installations of, of any devices that match certain device IDs. A device ID is simply a, uh, a number uh, that we associate with different types of devices by default within the system. So that's one way that we can restrict our devices from connecting to our workstations. On the local level, we have two different ways that we can either control device uh, access through the computer or through user levels. Uh, at the computer level, we can do this through local group policy settings uh, in the computer configuration, policies, administrative templates, system device, installation, removable storage, access folder, or at the user level, you will find the same folder, but you're going to find it in the user configuration settings. Here you can actually go in and change how these devices here are going to connect to our, to our workstations, whether it's CDs and DVDs, any kind of custom classes, floppy drives, removable disks, all these types, even tape drives are all included as part of this group policy process. So, if you're a network administrator or if you're a user at home and you're concerned about people connecting devices to your workstations, just remember that you do have some group policy options that are available to you as far as being able to control how these drivers are going to install on the workstation, therefore restricting access. Now let's take a look at configuring application restrictions. 
Application restrictions have actually been around for a long, long time. We used to use them to some degree in Windows XP to help prevent malware and so on. But the ba basic thing to remember about software restriction policies is that a software restriction policies, or the policies in plural, are group policy settings that enable administrators to specify the programs that are going to be allowed to run on the workstations by creating rules of various types. Now, software restriction policies, the old school way of doing this, involves creating rules that center around four types of rules, certificates, hashes, network zones, and paths. And I want to talk just briefly about each of these. Certificates, certificate rules are used when we know that we have a list of vendors that are providing us software products and in concert with those software products, they are also providing a certificate of authenticity for those products. The reason why we use this is that it's a more convenient way to allow these products to update in the usual fashion as long as the certificate remains valid. Hash rules can be a bit cumbersome to implement, partly because there are so many hashes that have to be generated in order for products to run on the workstation. But a hash is really just a digital signature that's uh, basically generated using some sort of algorithm on a file, usually an executable file, and that once that algorithm runs, it generates a signature, and that signature is not alterable. If the file becomes altered, then the hash is altered, therefore restricting access to the workstation. We actually like to use hashes in a different way because, generally speaking, by allowing access with hashes, we have to incorporate many dozens, if not hundreds, of hashes on the workstations. But it's good to use hashes, say, to prevent malware from running on the system. We can generate a hash for a specific type of malware. Then we can use an exclude policy to make sure that that piece of malware will not run, at least not in that fashion, on our workstations. Network zone rules are good if we are allowing users to use the internet to download certain software products. We can then take these internet addresses, put them in our trusted zone, and then create a network zone rule allowing only networks uh, in our trusted zone the ability to download and install applications. And last but not least, path rules, probably the most common rule that we see software restriction policies used, particularly good in a network setting when a network administrator has a share folder where all the software that is going to be deployed in their network environment is stored therefore creating a path rule allowing for software to come from only that software share path will be allowed to install on the workstation therefore increasing the security of the workstation environment now in order to create these rules you have to go into the group policy object and browse to the computer configuration policies windows settings security settings software restriction policy folder right click in the software restriction policies object and in the context menu select the software restriction policies you'll end up with a screen that looks a little like this and of course you can create additional rules as, as needed take for instance creating a path rule I've decided to create a new path rule and here I'm going to be asked for the path of the uh, folder that I want to either allow or disallow and I'm going to choose the security level. Security level. Now there are three types of security levels that I can choose. Disallow, which prevents an application matching those rules from running. Basic rules user, which allows the applications not requiring administrative privileges to run, but allows applications that do require administrative privileges to run only if they match a rule. And unrestricted. This allows an application matching a rule to run. So, back to our original screen here, I could put a path to my file folder and say, you know, uh, my file server, uh, folder in the file server, and then the specific, um, you know, I could use the specific applications to just say anything in this folder, I could uh, allow unrestricted. Now, AppLocker is fairly new. It actually came out in Windows 7. But uh, AppLocker is kind of the new and improved way to use application control policies. Software restriction policies can be a bit cumbersome to manage. They have a lot of administrative overhead. 
So you'll see a lot of administrators choosing to use AppLocker in the recent versions of Windows 7 and Windows 8. AppLocker uses rules which administrators must manage, but they can manage it in a wizard-based interface, making it much easier. The AppLocker settings are also group policy objects, and they're located in the Computer Configuration, Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Application Control Policies, AppLocker Container. And remember that this is also something that can be controlled at the domain level. In the app locker container, there are four nodes that can contain basic rule types: executive rules, I mean executable rules, executable rules, or rules that pertain to specific executable files. Windows installer rules. These are rules that include that include any installer packages, like with the .msi or .msp extension. Script rules. These rules apply to any scripts that want to run on your workstations. They could be batch files with a .bat extension, JavaScript files with a .gs extension, and so on and so forth. And of course, packaged app rules. These rules apply to the newfangled uh, apps that you can buy, say, in the Windows Store. Understanding the rule types can be, here we go, we're looking at the uh, Group Policy Management Editor, and as you can see, it is a GUI-based GUI environment. The one thing I do want to point out is that if you are going to use AppLocker, you're going to have to turn on uh, the application identity service. It's a service that runs in Windows 8.1. It has to be running. By default, it's set to manual and turned off. This is done on purpose because if you configure AppLocker the wrong way and say go in and configure it so that your Windows system files are locked out, you'll never get into your operating system again. So by default, they have this service turned off. There are two ways that you can ensure that you don't flub up the system by setting these rules. One way is that when you go into this wizard here, you'll see one of the options when you configure the new rule is to choose auditing. Auditing allows you to generate a report of what exactly took place as the rules were enforced without actually enforcing the rule. The other way is to ensure that your uh, application identity service will not start up in automatic mode until you've got your rules just the way you want them. Either way, just remember that if you're not careful, you can lock yourself out of the Windows system. So, how you set up your rules is important before you actually implement them. Now, if you're going to use AppLocker, then you have to create some rules that are going to enable your users to access the files needed for all the Windows system files to run and all the installed applications to run. And the best way to do this is simply to right click on each of the three rule containers and select create default rules from the context menu. Here we're in the default rules context menu and we have created some default rules for executables. We're going to allow Windows system installer rules and so on and so forth. When you right click one of these three rules containers and select the create rules automatically from the context menu the automatically generate rules wizard will appear and after the specifying the folder to be analyzed the users and the groups to which the rules should apply then a rule preference page is going to appear the wizard will then display a summary of the results and let you make any changes prior to implementing those rules here's what the creating rules automatically screen looks like and here we have selected or we're in the process of selecting our container to be analyzed. In this instance, C colon backslash program files. Once we have analyzed it, we get a set of criteria. Then we can make some rule preferences. In this instance, we're going to create publisher rules for files that are digitally signed. If they're not signed, then we want to be able to have file hash rules that are going to be created using the files hash. And then we're also going to want to reduce the number of rules created by grouping those similar files together. Okay. You also have the ability to create rules manually. You can use the create rules manually wizard. To start that wizard, you simply say create a new rule from the context menu. And then for one of those three rule containers, a wizard is going to prompt you for a type of action to be associated with the rule. The user or group associated with that type of action what conditions are going to prompt that action and then will there be any exceptions that will not allow that action to take place last but not least 
I want to talk about configuring assigned access. Assigned access is a new feature in Windows 8.1. It allows you to configure an 8.1 system to function as a kiosk, running in a single application in a protected environment. Now, in 8.1, it's now possible to associate a local user account with a specific Windows app. And there are a couple caveats to this. First of all, the user cannot launch another app once they're in that app. And the system is also going to suppress all notifications, disable all the key combinations, all gestures and shortcuts that provide access to any of the underlying system components, effectively locking down the system with the exception of that one app. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to create a local account that's going to be specifically used for that purpose. And then you're going to want to associate it with an app that you've already installed. Now, two things to remember, this only applies to local accounts. You have to use a local account created for this purpose. You can't use a domain account. And last but not least, it has to be a modern app. One of these apps you either purchase from the Windows Store or sideloaded with some sort of assigned access. Okay. Now, how do you find that? Well, you go into uh, your accounts folder, go under other accounts. When you see that, you'll see that it will allow you to set up an account for assigned access. Once you're there, go in, choose an account. That's a user account specific to that assigned access that you've already created. Then you're going to want to choose an app that can, for that account that it can access. By the way, do not use the administrator account for this purpose you have to have a way to get back into the system to make changes. All right, that's a pretty simple chapter. Lesson summary. Using group policy, I can restrict user access to removable storage devices and their workstations. That group policy can either be a domain group policy or one sitting on the local machine for either the computer as a whole or for specific users and groups. I can also use software restriction policies to homogenize my network environment I do this through the group's policy settings, and that will allow me to specify programs that are allowed to run on workstations by creating a set of rules of various types. Now, because software restriction policies tend to be kind of cumbersome to implement, we have a new tool out there called AppLocker. It's a new wizard-based tool available in Windows 7 and 8, and it's only available, of course, in Enterprise and Ultimate Editions. Might as well mention that. And it enables administrators to create application restrictions rules a whole lot easier than we could in the old-fashioned way. That's it for this chapter. I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next week.